Okay. Up for some company? Yeah, come on in. Join the fun. What you doing? You won't believe it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can take it. I was about to say get a life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I've done this. Disgusting habit. Yeah. How come I can't stop? Remember when you were little, picking scabs? Oh, <laughs> it was irresistible. Yeah. Same difference, only then we didn't end up bald. I mean, is that wig? No, actually, it's the down payment on a car. <laughs> you like? Well, it's certainly more flattering than wearing a car on your head. <laughs> Is it, is it just the way your hair was, uh, before? Well, I don't know. My hair's been through so many incarnations. The real color is a dim memory. But I figure I'm giving my hair follicles incentive. When it grows back, I want it to look like Julia Roberts. Huh. Curled? Why not? Oh, I probably look like Madonna, who stuck her thumb in a life socket. <laughs> it's a choice. Well, so who, who is your source? She's a lady right here in town. She used to uh, work in Hollywood, got fed up with the smog. You don't need a wig yet, but maybe you'd like to meet her sometime? Well, why not? I don't have anything else to do. Ah, that's a telling statement. Well, witness this evening's activities. Before you had cancer, what gave you real pleasure out of life? Well, two things spring to mind. Sex. <laughs> what, do I have a lascivious look on my yes. face? <laughs> What's the other? I would say performing a neat, successful surgery. That and giving a neat, successful diagnosis. That ranks right up there. So medicine and lovemaking. Yes, well... At the moment, my, my libido has gone into hibernation. The first time that I can remember, I suppose Alan probably is beginning to start looking at catalogs for sort of interesting devices that uh, are shipped in brown wrapping paper. As for my work... I bet you're a dynamite surgeon. I am. Well, I was. will be again. So, what else gave you pleasure, B.C.? B.C.? Ah, uh, before cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cute. See, your immune system isn't exactly going to stand up and cheer if all you're giving it for stimulation is an evening of pulling out your hair. Well, that's a good point. So, what's your joy? Besides carving up people and jumping into the hay with your hubby? Or am I making an assumption? Oh, I'm not uh, above temptation. But I think that uh, Alan is my mate now. For now, and I... I guess always. However long always may be. Let us not digress. What is it that you're not about to let cancer steal away from you? My kids. That's, that's obvious. That's the big stuff. I'm talking about the little stuff. The little everyday stuff. The stuff that just makes you happy. I haven't really given it any thought. Yeah, I bet. It's safer to keep the candy store locked up when you're not sure how many more pennies you'll have to spend. <laughs> My, how perceptive. Been there. Done that. Okay. I can see I have some work to do. Jason is following in his father's footsteps. Well, mine too. He's studying to be a doctor. He'll probably be a better one than either one of us. He doesn't get sidetracked. <laughs> With a girl who's involved him in politics, haven't helped them both. Oh, 
President Quartermain. I mean, it has a certain ring to it. <laughs> oh, I think AJ is going to take over the family business. Mm -hmm. He's been a wheeler dealer since he was in elementary school. Lemonade stand king? No, <laughs> nothing so tame. I remember when he was little, he took all of his father's cufflinks to the playground the day before Father's Day. He sold them to the kids who hadn't bought presents. No. Needless to say, Alan was furious. Cost him quite a bit of money to get those cufflinks back. The sad thing was, with his windfall, he bought his father golf balls, which Alan made him take back to the store. I play the intermediary with these two, Alan and H. A. I hope they're not going at each other's throats. And I hope Jason doesn't have to be a peacemaker. Anyone else you want to worry about before we get back to the subject at hand? <laughs> well, it was a good try. So who's Monica? Oh. Besides being a... A devoted mother, a loving wife, a dedicated surgeon. Well, I think that pretty much sums it all up. Ah, baloney. What do you love? Horses. I knew it. I knew you were a horsewoman. Oh, how did you know? It takes one to know one. I learned to ride when I was a kid. I think it's... It's the one sport I excel at. B.C. Oh, There's nothing like having 1,400 pounds of animal energy beneath you, is there? And now it takes all the stamina I can muster not to fall off his bed. I'm gonna miss that. Well, you can imagine it. Put yourself up there on that horse. Go on, do it. Put yourself up there. Come on, the two of you. You feel the power. You're strong. You're healthy. That silent communication. Feel that silent communication. Touch of a knee. Pressure of your hand. Oh, that horse knows just what you want. Trusts you. You're free. Make it a goal. There's a there's a stable about five miles from from the hospital. We can go there, hang out, talk to the horses. They're good listeners. They're the best. Yeah. Okay. What else? Let's see. Do you like music? Well, Alan, Alan, and I like opera. Oh, I hope he remembers we had tickets to La Boheme. Well, I don't know the first thing about opera. Hey, you could teach me. <laughs> Huh? Not by my singing, I couldn't, that's well, for sure. Well, sure, but you could get one of those little, those little portable CD players for the room here. Huh? I'd like that. Yeah, okay, now we're cooking. Cooking, cooking. Do you like to cook? Well, no, not if I can help it. Okay. Painting, sculpture? Love to look at it. I, I can't do it. Gardening? Well, my mother-in-law has the, the green thumb, really. <laughs> I miss her beautiful flowers. You're in cactus country, and I know cacti. Have you ever seen a night blooming cactus? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, first things first. We are going shopping now. We are? Yeah. I happen to know of an electronic store. Come on, it's open until 10 o'clock. We are going to get you a CD player, girl. 